Hey everyone, let's continue our discussion of groups. In this video, we're going to look at more examples of groups. So more examples of groups. So let's start with a very special group. It's actually called the special linear group. So this is called the special linear group. And we'll talk about why it's a group. So we'll start by defining um, G to be the set of all 2 by 2 complex matrices. So by a complex matrix, we mean that its entries are all complex numbers with determinant 1, with determinant one. And we can write down G in a more concrete fashion as follows. It's the set of all matrices of the form ABCD such that AB, C, and D are all complex numbers and the determinant of this matrix, ABCD, a, is equal to 1. So recall the formula for determinant says that AD minus BC would be equal to 1. Okay, so our binary operation here, star, is going to be regular matrix multiplication. So star is matrix multiplication. multiplication. And note that matrix multiplication is not necessarily um, commutative, right? So in fact, it's not always commutative, so it would not be a commutative operation. So this will be our first example of a group that's not commutative. Uh, commutative groups are called abelian groups. So this is actually an example of a non-abelian group. So it's our first, it's our first non-commutative group. So we have to show that um, star is a binary operation on G. So note, for any two matrices A and B in G, we have to show that the product AB is also in G. So what we do now is we write down what it means for A and B to be in G. Well, A is in G means that the determinant of A is equal to 1. And B is in G, so that means that the determinant of B is equal to 1. This is precisely what it means for A and B to be in G. So for any A, B, and G, we have this. So we want the product to be in G. That means we have to look at the determinant of the product. So then the determinant of A times B, I'm going to cheat here and use a property, <laughs> this is equal to uh, the determinant of A times the determinant of B. I suppose we could have showed it quite easily in this video because here we have a 2 by 2 matrix. It's really easy to show for 2 by 2, but it's quite messy. So we're cheating a little bit. <laughs> the determinant of A is 1 and the determinant of B is 1, so 1 times 1 is equal to 1. So we have the determinant of AB equal to 1. So that's exactly what it means for AB to be in G. So this shows, this shows star is a binary operation on G, is a binary operation, operation on G. Good stuff. So we have a set with the binary operation. Let's go through and talk about three conditions. Recall the three conditions for a set uh, to be a group. Uh, one is that your um, binary operation is associative. Two is the existence of an identity element. And three is the existence of inverses. So matrix multiplication is associative. We'll go ahead and take that for granted. So star is associative. 
Okay, so matrix multiplication is associative. Two, we need uh, an identity element. So we're going to use the identity matrix. So this guy here is the identity element. So the identity matrix will be our identity element. And note that if you compute the determinant of this matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1, using the formula you would get 1 times 1, right? You multiply these, you subtract minus 0 times 0. So you just get 1. So this is actually an element that resides in G, right? Because what does it mean to be in G? It means that the determinant of your matrix is 1. So this is actually an element in G. Also, if you take any element, so for any, say A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, and G, if we multiply um, the identity on the left, or our proposed identity, by A, B, C, D, you can check using regular matrix multiplication that you do get A, B, C, D. Likewise, if you take A, B, C, D and multiply it by the proposed identity element on the right, you also get A, B, C, D. So this shows that um, this identity matrix is actually our identity element in the set G. So this shows this shows that this matrix is the identity element of G. Now, um, I said the identity element of G. It's implying it's unique. It is. Um, it's pretty easy to prove that if you have a group and an identity and, and an identity element that the identity is unique. Likewise, inverses are also unique. So we have one star is associative two. We have the existence of an identity. Now let's do three. So given any matrix uh, in G, we have to find an inverse. So given any, let's say uh, A B C D, A B C D, inside G. We need an inverse, right? We need an inverse matrix. Uh, so its inverse is, and the inverse matrix, what we do, what we'll do here is we'll swap the um, diagonal elements and we'll put negative signs in front of the other ones. So how did I know to do that? Um, just, just recall from, let's just go over here and I'll show you. Just recall from the past, if you have A, equals um, A, B, C, D. The inverse of A, like when you, when you study linear algebra, it's, it's 1 over det A, because det A is not 0 if your matrix is invertible. And then you swap the um, diagonal entries, and you put negative signs in front of the other ones. So in this problem here, I know that the determinant of A is going to be 1. So I know this matrix should work, right? It should work. So if we have a matrix in G, we're claiming that this is going to be the inverse. So 1 over dead A is just 1 over 1 in this problem. That's why I didn't write it. And the claim is that this is in G, first of all. So this is in G. And uh, I'll, I'll just put this in parentheses here. This is because, well, let's see, what is the determinant of this matrix? It would be DA minus, and then negative B times negative C is BC. What's well, the same thing as AD minus BC? That's the determinant of this matrix here, right? AD minus BC, and that's in G. So AD minus BC is equal to 1. So over here, it's also equal to 1. And so that's why this matrix resides in G. And now we can explain why it's the inverse. Well, if you take AB, CD, and you multiply it by D negative B negative C A. Let's go ahead and, and do the multiplication carefully. So we want the entry in the first row, first column. So we use the first row, first column. So it'll be A D. Okay, A D. Uh, and then uh, minus B C. Sorry, we have A D uh, minus B C. 
I think I wrote something down wrong here. Let me check. So we have A, B, C, D, D, negative B, negative C, A. All right, so we have A, D, minus B, C. Hmm. Let me just check this. So we switch these. We have negatives here. So A, B, C, D. And then this says D, negative B, negative C, A. Yeah, so it'll be A, D plus negative BC, so minus BC, there it is. And then it's negative AB plus AB. Thought I messed up there for a moment. Well, brain failure. <laughs> CD minus CD, and then negative BC uh, plus AD. Yikes. Okay, so AD minus BC is 1. This is 0. This is 0. This is 1. And likewise, you can check that the other multiplication also works. So if you do D negative B negative C A times A B C D, you can also check, and this also gives you uh, this. Yeah, the reason I got confused there is because uh, I was subtracting. I, I, I got so stuck on um, <laughs> uh, finding determinants. Remember, when you, you're adding here, right? When you, when, you, when you multiply to find this first entry, it's A D plus and then B times negative C. So it's AD minus BC. I got so used to computing determinants that I was subtracting. I'm like, no, there's a mistake. OK, so this shows that um, this is the inverse element. Um, so we have a set. It has associativity. Uh, it has an identity element. And we have inverses for every element. And so we have what is called a group. So this shows that G under matrix multiplication is a group. And it's called the special the special linear group. Let's look at one more um, example here, or maybe just a few quick one few quick examples. If we look at another example, say G, this will be all two by two complex matrices. So two by two complex matrices uh, with non-zero determinant non-zero determinant. And again, we'll let um, star, in this case, be uh, matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication. This is also a group. This is called the uh, general linear group. So general linear group. General linear group. So the uh, special linear group is a subset of the general linear group. And later on, we'll learn that whenever you have a subset of a group that's also a group under the same operation, it's called a subgroup. So the special linear group is a subgroup of the general uh, linear group. Let's look at uh, maybe one more example, just one more. Um, if we take the complex numbers, and we have an n here, this is going to be the set of all n tuples of complex numbers. So a1 dot 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 a sub n. And then here each, each a sub j is a complex number. Okay. This is a group. This is a group. Uh, with star, so star in this case is going to be uh, component-wise addition. So component, component-wise addition. So star will be component-wise addition. So if you take an element a1, comma, dot, 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 a sub n, and you star it with another element, say b1, dot, 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 b sub n, what you do um, is you just add the corresponding entries. So it'll be a sub 1 plus b sub 1, comma, dot, 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 comma, a sub n plus b sub n. And this is going to be a binary operation um, because if you take two complex numbers, you get a complex number. So each of these guys resides uh, in C. And each aj plus bj is a complex number because the complex numbers are closed under addition. So this is certainly an element of this set here, c to the nth power. Um, the first condition is pretty easy to show. 
Uh, so star is associative. So star is associative. So we do have an associative binary operation. Two, um, the identity element here is just going to be the n-tuple consisting of zeros in every entry. Okay, so we'll have a zero in every single entry. So this is the identity, is the identity. And three, three, um, the inverse, we're stating all this without proof, but it's pretty easy to verify. The inverse of an element, say a sub one comma dot 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 a sub n is going to be the n tuple negative a sub one comma dot 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 negative a sub n. So this will be a group. That's it. This video is already, um, it's about to exceed 16 minutes. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for visiting my YouTube channel. In the next video, uh, maybe we'll do a couple more examples of groups. That's it.